Why would a drum plugin released nearly eight years ago still be so popular? What makes it better than other choices? And why do I continue to recommend it? Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. The plugin is Addictive Drums 2 and I'll be asking what makes this plugin so great? As we look at this plugin to find out why it's still so popular, I'll reveal my personal favorite feature which may surprise you and also how you can get it at a great price. But let's start off with what's inside. If you haven't guessed yet, Addictive Drums 2 is a virtual drum plugin. It comes in VST, AU and AAX formats so it can be used with pretty much any door on the planet. It's sample based meaning it uses actual recordings of real drums. Now when you first start it up you see this view here. This is the gallery view and if we flick through we can get an idea of the range of sounds and kits available for Addictive Drums 2 and that's one of the things we'll be talking about later on. The next view we see here is the explore view. Now here we can actually demo some kits. So we can go through to say a kit that we think may work. Let's go through here to uh, Black Velvet. This may work and we can play some different presets. So we'll just press on this play button here. Now there's not only different rhythms being played there, but there's different sounds to the kit. You can also do a bit of a rough mix here as well to get a starting point. The cool thing about this view is it includes kits that you haven't actually added or bought yet. So you can actually demo some of those ad packs that we'll talk about later that you haven't actually bought. Very cool indeed. Now the page where I find I spend most of my time is on this kit view here. This is where we can see our actual kit and we can swap out drums individually to customize our kit so let's say I'm using this kick drum here I think I don't really like the sound of that I can just click on this load button here and go to some different kits depending on what ad packs again you've bought so I can swap that out and I can then test that out. I can even do it while I'm actually playing a rhythm. So I can keep the rhythm going and try different drums. That's very cool. Now down the bottom is one of the most important areas. This is the mix area where we can actually mix our drum kit. And importantly, it's where we also control our routing to our door, which I think is a really important and powerful feature, which I will discuss later on. Moving on from there, we have the edit page. Here we can actually really craft our individual drums. I've got that kick drum selected here I can go through and actually shape the sound of it and then apply various effects as well things like compression and distortion EQ tape saturation all of that good stuff so we can really tailor the individual drums once we've loaded them up from there we have an effects section which is basically reverb and delay and there's a nice amount of crafting of those effects that we can do in there moving on from there we have a beats area this is where we can actually actually use some of the grooves and MIDI packs that we can get for addictive drums. So we can try them here, we can play them, and then we can just drag them out from here into our door and start using them right away. And finally, I just want to mention here, just up in this sort of menu up here, the settings menu, we have this map window here that we can pull up. This is where we can assign various individual drums to different keys on our keyboard. And we'll be discussing that a little bit later on. So that's an overview. Now I want to start off by talking about, of course, the most important aspect, the sound. So in order for this to be regarded as a great plugin, of course it has to have great sound. And all of the drums in Addictive Drums 2 were recorded in really pro studios with great mics, etc. So we have got really nice samples. But it's important that those samples are recorded intelligently and implemented intelligently, especially when it comes to velocity. So if you don't know, velocity is about how hard, for example, you play the key on your MIDI keyboard. Now, obviously, things tend to get louder when we play them harder. Not only that, but the character of the sound changes. And that's what I really love about Addictive Drums too, because it feels very, very natural. So if we take this snare, for example, here, I'll play it quietly and then more loudly.
And at certain velocities, you know, the actual snare itself, um, that sort of fizzy sound becomes more prevalent. Um, at louder velocities, we get a little bit more ring, a lot more knock as well. So the character of the drum is changing in the way a real drum would. Now, what we're actually hearing there, though, when we hear this snare sample, is not just one microphone point at the snare, but we're hearing um, some microphones point at the, sa the snare and the overhead mics and also the room mics as well. And we may be hearing some effects. So what I'm going to do is just mute the overheads and the room mics there, and I'll just actually turn off the effects. Now, have a listen to this snare now. sounds super dry yeah now you may want that for your recording but it's more likely that you're going to want that and you're going to want the ability to blend in the other microphones as well and that's what you can do here obviously using the mixer it really feels like you're you recorded these drums yourself and you're able then to sort of mix them in the way you would in the studio where they were recorded. It's very, very powerful and enables you to add your own character to the mix of these drums, of course. Now, we can actually delve in way deeper into the sound of each individual drum. We'll be looking at that later. But as we get into the sounds, I have to talk about the range of sounds we have available as well. So one of the strengths of Addictive Drum Studio is the range of kits that you can get for it. They're called ad packs. And, you know, if you ran a semi-professional or professional studio you may want to get many of them to cover different genres of music but if you tend to focus on one or two genres of music then you may only need one or two different ad packs there really is a massive range we get your fair you get your fairfax kits to begin with here i think of those as the sort of basic kits i guess then you've got things like black velvet sort of rock orientated this one curious boutique mallets are really sort of i can't really describe it really but a kit using mallets it's just a really unique sound um, soul and R&B kit there another heavy kit we do get a few rock kits in here actually um, moving through a pop kit here a vintage dry which is a really nice sounding old 70s kit here and if you just want percussion and you don't really need a full, sort of traditional drum kit you've got it here with this session percussion kit an indie kit really sort of ringy and nice that one uh, a really heavy drum kit here with the metal one if you want electronic sounds you've got this one real machine Machines. very very handy 808 909 sounds in there that kind of thing a really nice funk kit and also like some of the rhythms that are associated with that one a couple of drum kits this one here to do with jazz which is sticks and then another one here which is brushes i love the brushes kit in here retroplex which again is a kind of a rock kit but very 70s in its sound um, then blue oyster which again is a really sort of more your sort of led zeppelin style of sound of drum kit i guess sounds very very good and black oyster as well um, and then we've got our three studio kits prog there and pop and rock as well so a massive range of kits there so what we're going to do now is just set up one beat and play through some of these kits so you get to hear the variation in sound One of the things that makes this plugin so great is the amount of control we have over individual drums. Of course, we can select individual drums as we discussed earlier. So we can start off with a basic sound, for example, with a snare here. I can choose which kind of character of snare I want. And then, of course, we've got close mics on each drum, overhead and room mics as well. And we can blend those with the mixer. But it gets really powerful when we go to the edit page. I'll go there now and I'm going to start off by selecting a tom here because one of the things I like to do is change the envelope or envelope for my drums so I can really sort of craft the sound especially in terms of decay and release that kind of thing and for a tom it's a really good example because you may find that according to your taste it may be ringing uh, maybe not enough maybe too much we'll have a listen to this tom 
Got a little bit of ring going on there, so I'll just switch on this envelope feature here and let's adjust the release to begin with and also let's adjust the sustain time. I'll pull it back here, we'll pull this release back again. Have a listen now. Yeah, a much shorter sounding tom there. So very, very cool. You could, of course, have a really loud attack, yeah, and then just push the decay down so you've just got a real initial sort of transient there with nothing else afterwards there. And you could even do weird things like, you know, change that attack time. So it's got a soft attack. Not very likely you'll do that, but you may want that option. We also have control over things like the pitch, for example, not just with the drum over as an overall sort of control, but also we can control the pitch with the overheads in the room. So I'll just push those right down here. Let's have a listen. Very cool stuff there. As well as all of that kind of shaping control and pitch control, you've also got a bank of effects down the bottom here. Yeah, compression, EQ, uh, tape saturation, all of that good stuff. The kind of effects that you're almost always going to use with drums, but they're in a handy place here with the controls that you need to use for drums. Now, of course, you can still output these drums to your door and you can use your regular plugins as well if you want to do that. But I like the effect which are in here very very handy indeed now with some of the drums let's say look at the let's look at the snare for example we also have control over the mix of microphones because some drums are recorded with two microphones so the snare has a top and bottom one and we can control that mix there with all of the drums as well we can control how much of their sound goes to the overheads and how much to the rooms so you've just got an amazing amount of control over this initial sound of the drum and then the mix of the drum in a, in a very sort of micro way you can actually control that really really phenomenal now the other thing which i think is really important is the routing now we have this mixer down the bottom here and you could just have this um, plug in um, put into your door insert it into your door and just have a stereo output for it fine you could do all of your mixing here but you can also have every single drum output to your door as well so you know we could press this button here and we can send a separate output to our door and have its own channel and we can do that both pre and post fader now as well as having that separate output we could also um, have the separate output for that drum as well as it going to that master stereo channel that means you don't have to send all of your drums out and mix it all in your door that is my preference by the way but you could decide to have just a, your mix Mixing done here but maybe with just with one drum say a snare that you want to put a big delay and you've got a favorite delay you can have that going out to its individual track and then add effects in your main door there just an incredible amount of control this level of control means that it's hardly surprising that this plugin has been so popular for so long now all of this becomes possible of course with an interface let's talk about the interface if I'm perfectly honest I think after seven and a half years or nearly eight years the interface may be showing signs of looking a little bit dated we're just not used to seeing these kind of old beveled edges and things these days with design T things tend to be much more flat that's the only thing i think is it's really just a fashion thing yeah and it could be just a matter of opinion but in terms of the imagery like the drums and things i think that all looks great especially when we go to this browse view here i mean i don't think that's ever really going to date um, in terms of the workflow, I still think it stood the test of time because it starts off over here with the gallery. We've just got this basic overview of kits which are available and you're going to think about that. Which kits do I want? You may or may not decide to buy more etc then as you choose a kit you'll go into this explore and you'll just demo them with different with different sort of uh, uh kits here different presets for each kit as well and you can also set up a sort of basic mix if you want here once you've done that we get more granular when we move into the kit area here um and we're going to you know swap out individual drums and we're going to do a basic mix all of that good stuff you see there's a there's a sense to this workflow because then we move on to the edit area where we're getting really granular with individual drums and we're going to start to shape their sound 
after that, when we've got our basic mix set up, then we may look at reverb and delay. That's on the effects tab over here. You can switch those on. And of course, we can send individual drums to these effects. That's kind of how a lot of us would work in terms of workflow. Now, a little bit of a sort of an outsider with this, because it's not in the basic workflow, is beats. You may or may not use these preset beats. These are what they call MIDI packs. You can buy these individually and they suit certain genres of music. I don't personally make much use of them because I like to write individual drum patterns for songs, but you may love these. They may get you off to a great start with your songs and you can just drag them out to your door to get started with them. So there's a sense to the workflow here. I don't think that that is dated at all. And I hope when they bring a new version out, they don't really change that because I actually really love it. So I guess one of the features of a plugin is its price. That's going to determine how many of you actually use it. And this is used in Pro Studios and Home Studios alike. And that's because it's always been at a reasonable price, at least. And one of the great things is you can start off small, just with the core package, maybe a couple of ad packs, and then grow it as you play different genres of music and you want different drums and maybe different MIDI packs, etc. So you can start off small with it and then gradually make it grow. So that makes it sort of easier for most of us to buy. Now, I want to say up front, this video is not sponsored by anyone at all. This is just my own video, but I am going to put a link in the description down below to Plugin Boutique, where they usually have some great deals for addictive drum stuff. Also, at the time of making this video, without wanting to sound too salesy, there's only a few hours left for their Black Friday sales and you can get really good prices on this, this stuff there. So definitely check out that link in the description down below. Whether you're watching this um, during the Black Friday period or afterwards, it's always a good price there at Plugin Boutique. So I want to talk about my favorite feature about this plugin and why it's so great for me and why I often choose it over other plugins. And this may surprise you because on the face of it, it doesn't seem that amazing. But I want to talk about the variation of sound with some of the individual drums. You see, drums can sound really, really mechanical if you've always got the same samples playing. Now, of course, with the different velocities, yeah as we discussed earlier on something like this snare, then it changes its sound. But I'm talking also about different articulations, different sounds that we get from a snare drum. Now this is best demonstrated if we go over to the mapping feature. So I'll do that now. I'm just gonna open the map window. This is where we would assign um, different drums to different keys. Well, if I've got snare selected here. Look at the different sounds we have for the snares available. So this snare and rim shot, snare open, a shallow rim shot, side stick. I mean, so many different sounds. Now, what I like about this is it's not just defined by something, you know, like velocity. We've also got these mapped across several keys. So when you're playing your drums live and making your uh, drum patterns, you've got access to all of those. To my mind, that really makes things sound much more natural, particularly with snare and also one of my favorite parts with hi-hat. If we go to the hi-hat here, there's so many different hi-hat sounds. Now, I like the fact that we've got lots of variations on the open, yeah, the open hi-hat. This is particularly useful um, when you're, say, on a verse and you've got a nice tight closed sound and then the chorus is going to have an open hi-hat. You can just, in those last few beats of the verse, just gradually open that hi-hat up as you go into the chorus. For me, that makes a world of difference in terms of making drums sound realistic. And by the way, if you're using an electronic drum kit to trigger these and you've got different zones on your drums which send out different um, MIDI signals depending on where you hit the drum, you can also map them to all these different sounds. So if you're an actual drummer and you're using a kit, you're going to have all of these different articulations of sounds available to you. You even have, it, for example, on say the cymbals. If we go to a cymbal, we've got a regular cymbal sound and we've got a choked cymbal. And again, I'll just try and play that. Yep. And we can choke it like so. So 
really, really handy. As well, of course, you know, you can map these to your liking so you don't have to stick to the regular addictive drums mapping. You may have used another plugin and you've got used to the mapping. You could change the mapping there. That's all fine. But it's a great way to discover all of the various sounds, all the variations in sound that you get with these drums. Very, very, very powerful. Now, you have to use these features for them to be in operation. If you just use addictive drums to in the very basic way and you don't take advantage of all these different articulations, then you may get that sort of very ordinary sound to your drums. It takes some effort still, but you can get great results. Now, before I tell you why I think this plugin is so great, I want you to have your say. Let me know in the comments down below. If you already have been using this plugin for a number of years, why are you continuing to use it? And if you're thinking about buying it, which surely you should be, then why are you thinking about buying it? I'd love to hear in the comments down below. But why do I think this is a great plugin? Well, let's start off with the basics. Design, it's got a great workflow. I love the way that we sort of start off big and get more and more detailed, more and more granular as we go along. Two, the range of drum kits for different genres is just incredible. There seems to be something there for everyone and you get a great deal of control over mixing and matching them with custom kits, etc. Three, the price. The price is absolutely awesome for a plugin which you could use for, you know, potentially like a decade or more. It's really great. Finally, I have to say the main thing, the main thing, of course, is the sound. I think all of these kits that you get, you know, or you, you can buy with Addictive Drums to just have an amazing sound, which of course you can take and adapt. You can make it your own. Now, one of the things you could do is actually output individual sounds to your door and use plugins in your door, just the way you would if you'd recorded these drums yourself in a studio. Now, one of the best plugins you can use to manipulate the sound of your drums is EQ. And I don't think there is any better EQ than FabFilter Pro Q3. I've made a video about that and you can watch it right here. I discuss in this why that plugin is so great. You should definitely go ahead, watch it now. Go on, watch it now.